Hey guys, what's up? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Really quickly, I want to say thanks to Bob Jennings for writing in on the Facebook page for today's video request. Um, good timing too, because I've actually myself been working with the mastering plugins on GarageBand lately and learning how to use them um, to get the best results out of it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So the very first thing that needs to be addressed when you are about to master your project and get it out, um, especially if you're having issues when you are exporting and things aren't loud enough, is the, the most common thing that I see is that somewhere along the line, and usually it's a lot of places along the line, is that it's clipping in these individual channels. So anywhere that you have clipping, anywhere you see the signal going into the red, turn it down. You might have to remix the whole thing. You know, that is why your projects aren't coming out as loud as you want them to, because you have something driving too hard inside the program before you're exporting. So what happens is when you do export from GarageBand, the program itself is trying to fix all that distortion that, you know, you mixed into it. Um, uh, you know, it sees that signal getting up past its point and the program starts pushing it down. And if you have a lot of stuff doing that, the program will push them all down. And then on the final export, it'll sound too low. You know what I mean? So point is, don't let any of your individual channels be clipping any way, shape, or form, okay? Um, that's step one. Number two, you have to open the master track, okay? If you don't know how to do that, up to the track pull-down menu, second to last one right here. Mine says hide it because it's open, but yours would say open master track. You will select that. It will default drop it in the very last row, right? So it's right here at the very bottom. And I have all mine turned off right now because we're gonna listen uh, just so you can hear the difference, okay? So this is a little bit of listening. Here's the song that we're working on, um, Unmastered, all right? So let's just take a look and a listen. And you'll hear and see a dramatic difference. Here we go. Okay, so that's unmastered. Here's the mastered version. Okay, so what you should be noticing, especially visually, is that there's a huge difference in the way the waveforms look, right? So the mastered version, all the stuff that was low in the mix has been brought up, and things that were too high in the mix have been evened out, right? You can see that across the board. This this line here is nice and even. When you open this one, those high points are sort of all over the place, right? This one's high, this one's low, this one's a little higher, this one's a little higher. You know what I mean? You go down here, all those peaks have been pretty much evened out. Um, so that's what's going to happen when you master it, okay? That's just so you could hear what, what I'm talking about. Okay, so anyway, now I'm in the mastering channel, uh, and the one that I like the best is this one, the modern right here. Uh, I think it has like the, all the components that I like to use when I'm mastering in, you know, a lot of, you know, I use t rex the most, uh, recent version from IK Multimedia, really great program. It's a standalone independent program, but, uh, it works great. And I use, have been using it for years and I think it's awesome. But anyway, we're here talking about GarageBand's plugins because they are starting to get so much better. It's really impressive. Um, okay. So. Anyway, the first thing I will be doing is turn on my channel EQ, the compressor, the first compressor, the multipressor, a second compressor, and a limiter, okay? So the first, very, very first thing I like to do is just give it an overall EQ, right? So let's just take a look and a listen here. Okay, so there's a few different things that I would change about this, and I'm just gonna show you quickly how I do it. You know, this might not be the best overall result because I'm doing it fast. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna grab this low mid control in the EQ, and I'm gonna bring it down here. So just so you know, this area of 200 hertz is like one of those, it's just one of those areas where it's sort of an always problem area for everybody's everything. Um, so this is a really good area to start getting rid of some of the, the muddiness of your mixes. I mean, look at... Mm -hmm. 
right? So a, lo a little bit of the bass is in there, a lot of the kick drums in there, a lot of the snare is in there too. Um, it's just one of those areas that just if you pull this out, it's probably going to help your mix sort of clean up a little bit. So I'll bring this down here and then I want to narrow that down. So I'm just going to come over here to the Q control. I'm going to click it and then just pull down. Whoops, rather. Whoops, I mean, I'm going to push up. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to push it up. And you can see as I do this, right, it's sort of narrowing that bandwidth down. Um, so right around there, probably. Okay. Then the other thing I see is sort of up in here, there's just not a lot going on. Like it's sort of sort of low. And I would just like to hear a little bit more of those components of the mix. Now, of course, I do have the high cut and a low cut running, right? Or a high pass and a low pass running. Um, so I just sort of do that to shave off the, the fat, the extraneous stuff that you don't really need to hear anyway, because it's below, you know, what humans can hear. Um, and then same here, I do it up here, mostly to shave off the crispiness of it. You know, I don't really like that, like really super tss -tss crispy digitally sound. Right. And especially if you're adding stuff in from this, like, say, 2 to 10K range, it's important to shave off some of the extra high end because you're boosting, you know, some of the other high end. So OK, so that's basically it. I think that sounds pretty good. Maybe, maybe we'll push this low up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so um, so that's it with the EQ. Now, all I can the, the last thing I will say about EQ though, don't do a lot of it. Just do a little bit of it, right? You're just trying to clean up the overall EQ. Uh, and if there are things that you're hearing, like in from the mix, like oh shoot, I need to, that has too much bass, that guitar or whatever, go up and fix it. You're in GarageBand. You're not in a separate program. So just fix the EQ uh, of the individual stuff um, if there's a problem specifically with that instrument instead of trying to n get rid of it with uh, the, the mastering EQ. Okay. So very next thing I'm going to do is this compressor here. Now this compressor is actually acting more as like the squeezer, right? Uh, if you look at it, up here, you know, the compression, the, the threshold sets a negative 15.5. It's just, it's working a little bit harder than the other compressor that's coming in. It's one of the ones that really does sort of uh, help shave off the high end, I, which I really, you know, or the extra peaks. So let's just take a look. Oh, I should say something about this too before I start. Um, I'm going to open this compressor and I love this platinum analog tape one. Uh, this is under compressor tools and you use just, pl you know, platinum analog tape. You know, you know, I should also say it's not just enough to open up, just click on modern and hope that it's going to be good, right? You, you got to go in and manipulate the individual plugins to get the best results out of the mastering. That's, you know, duh. <laughs> right. Okay. So I like the pr platinum analog tape one. I think it's a really nice sounding one. It can be a little dramatic for people, um, depending on the song. I think it's good. Um, if you're looking for one that's a lot more transparent, the opto, the opto, where is it? Light there, that one right there. Um, it's not opto, <laughs> just as ty type R light. Uh, that one is very um, unintrusive and you don't really hear it a lot, but it definitely works well. Uh, I just like the sound of this one. I think it has sort of like a nice pumping uh, feature. So anyway, let's take a listen to it without it or with it and without it. I'll just click on and off for you. Right. So you should have heard that like it was actually bringing the overall volume down down a little bit right um so it, it in a sense it's it is kind of doing a little bit of limiting but it's it's not it's compressing the high end stuff and the low end stuff now there's this other one the exciter I, if you really feel like you need it go ahead and use it i don't personally i don't get too excited about this one um there are a few different things you can do you know that to try to make it not so sizzly and fry but eh, in general i'm not a huge fan of this particular thing maybe your recording needs it 
So try it out. Now, the multi-presser by far is one of my favorite things to use when I'm mastering. Um, and in fact, like even before, I'll usually throw this on a mix before uh, I export it. And then when I bring it into IK Multimedia's uh, T-Rex mastering program, you know, I will have already used this. So this thing just sort of helps do a really good job of an overall boost on everything in a nice and controlled manner. Um, so, you know, when you open the multipressor, it is, you know, another blank. It's set to its default. You have to open it up um, and go down to fast attack four band. Then the other thing, you know, sometimes it might be a little loud or, you know, too low for you. So you can sit here and obviously manipulate the volume of it. Um, I think in this case, I think just zero dB was good. It did a nice little boost. But yeah, the, that four band fast setting is awesome. Okay. What happened there? Let's look at this for a second. Okay. I see. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, next one down the row is compressor number two. Two, okay so what this compressor is doing is this is the one that's sort of bringing up the low stuff okay so let me just turn this on and off for you now as you will see I have not gone up and done anything here I haven't pulled out any specific things what I did do myself was I just sat here and I brought the threshold uh, down a little bit, down to 19.5. Um, I love that I have these click tabs finally. It's so nice, right? 19.5. Uh, the um, ratio is 1.5 uh, to 1. And sorry, <laughs> and the attack is 7 milliseconds. I'll, you could read that. 1, one dB for the gain. Um, this compressor, you know, this is sort of a... You don't hear it as much. So I didn't, you know, I went and was listening to these and I was like, eh, nothing was really lighting me up, you know. So I just sat here and manipulated it the way I wanted it to work. Um, and, you know, it's really the threshold is the most powerful control on this one. The threshold and the gain, those are the two most powerful ones. So just play with those. And so it doesn't sound like it's overly compressing right it's it, it should sound like you should be able to hear the compressor a little bit like as an audio engineer you should be able to hear when a compressor is running or not um but you know in this case like we're mastering so you kind of do want to hear a little bit of the compression pumping or boosting or whatever it is i mean that's sort of the whole point of mastering is to bring these levels up and to even things out so don't be afraid of the fact that you can hear it but just be aware that you don't want to hear it too much okay um so, and then the very last thing is the limiter, which is really probably the most important thing. And it's why it's at the end of the chain, because this is the thing that sort of tames everything else in the row that you've plugged in, in, in right? In, right? Um, so let me just turn the limiter on and off just so you can hear it. Right. It's not doing very much. All it's doing is, you know, the way I have my limiter set up in this particular case, especially because you have two compressors running, is I just have it shaving off a little bit of any of the extra high end. Now, what I do to look for that, like where is that high end I'm talking about, right? So if it's off, right? And you just look up here, right here in this mastering, in this master output VU meter, right? Anything that's going into the red, um, I can't remember exactly where. There's like one loud part that just needed to be limited just a touch. Um, but yeah, that's it. You know, I mean, in here you can see. And if I hit the limiter, let's look. Right? I wish, I really wish there were numbers or something to look at so I could be more specific. But all I can say is there was less yellow, right? Um, in fact, I could probably turn the whole thing up if I wanted to push a little harder, um, which I didn't just mean to do. Anyway. So the whole point of this video really is to say that A, the mastering program in GarageBand is way better than it used to be in the older version. It's totally usable. And if you do it right, it really isn't going to hurt or bring your volumes down. In fact, it will do what you want it to do, which is bring your overall levels up and give you a nice glossy EQ and the compression, all the different components just sort of helps solidify the entire mix. Um, 
but it, even like I said at the very beginning of this video, make sure that none of your tracks are clipping. That is hands down the most important <laughs> pre-mastering step, you know, like nothing can be clipping. So let's just leave it at that. Um, besides that, you know, opening your master track, get in there and manipulate the plugins as you see fit, right? The more you play with your own program, obviously, the more you're going to get to learn it. And, you know, like one of the things that I like to do sometimes, if I don't really understand what a control does on something, I will go all the way to zero and all the way to 100 with it. And I'll listen to what the difference is in between and at those extreme, you know, ends, opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, so just play with this stuff, experiment with it and listen to it. And then export it, bring it back into GarageBand and look at it, you know, and really comprehend what you've done. Now, another way to do this, just to look at other projects that have been mastered is pull like a professional recording you may have like out of iTunes or whatever, wherever you may have a professionally recorded and mastered song, bring it in to GarageBand and look at the waveform. It's going to look a lot like this one down here. Um, where it's all sort of like flat at the top and the bottom and sort of, you know, it just sort of looks much more mastered than the other one where it sort of looks like, I don't know, unmastered, right? <laughs> Not to use too many technical terms. Um, but I think that's pretty much it, you guys. If you have any questions about any of the stuff I just talked about, feel free to leave comments below. And um, remember, experiment and play with this stuff. The more you do it, the better you get. Every song that you record will be better than the last one. Maybe sonically, maybe not necessarily musically, but sonically, you should be getting better in every single project. So get out there, hit that record button. Have a great day. I always appreciate your support. I'm actually about to go on my honeymoon for two weeks. So uh, I'm going to be out of the town, out of town, not making videos for a couple of weeks. Don't get mad at me. I'll be back. All right. Have a great day, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.